trust in the Philippines. I had somebody comment going, oh, well, you must be an idiot. You got a mobile locked in your office. Oh, you know nothing about the Philippines. You've obviously never been ever. Guy's obviously an idiot that's never been to the Philippines. Um, not myself. The reason you lock stuff away is trust. Now, my motorbike would actually be in the carport if it's not there. And in the carport, even when I'm home, you'll get kids and stuff tinker. So you imagine if it's there for a year, how much tinkering goes on. And also, the air is not good for the motorbike. So in the office, put up on its stand, doesn't damage the tires. It's in a nice, clean, dry environment. There's no water damage getting done to it. That's why it's in the office. Um, also, it's behind uh, high security five lever locks, which means nobody tampers with it because my office is my little space where everybody knows that's my space. Nobody touches anything in there and it's locked 90% of the time because nobody needs to go in there at all. It, it, it's my domain. Um, but this is getting on to the trust. Trust in the Philippines, you have to be aware people will abuse it like no tomorrow. Anything you own is irrelevant to them. If somebody says they will borrow, can I borrow or use or just pick up your screwdriver and never bother putting it back, that's normal because it's not theirs. It's one of the biggest things that really, really gets under my skin is the fact that nobody gives up about other people's stuff. Because if it's not theirs, they do not care. Um, they do it to each other. It's not It's not a foreigner for a Filipino thing. It is done by so many people. And you, some days you just want to thump some people for doing it. Um, let's give a prime example. A relative of my wife asked if they could borrow my um, welding machine. Now, my welding machine... Um, cost me, I think, fourteen or sixteen thousand pesos. It's quite a large. It might even been twenty-one thousand actually. It's quite a large one. Um, so I assumed that this relative was borrowing it. It wasn't. It was his son, and his son had also borrowed his welding machine. And the workers that had used it. So it's gone from the person that had asked my relative, uh, asked my wife, to. Um, was a relative to his son to now workers because I would not lend them to workers unless I can physically see them because they you got to be careful with them. Um, what did they do? They dropped both of them off a roof because they were too lazy to carry them down. Um, it smashed some of the internal bits in mine and I can't get any parts for it. I've basically got to buy a new one. Um, because the parts have got to come from Japan and it's an old old unit because the, in the Philippines there's so many things that are antique, shall we say, but they keep rebuilding them in the Philippines. If they can get parts, they'll, they'll put life back into it. So this unit is useless. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, you should get his father to pay or whatever. The relationship with his father is more important than the welding machine. Also, he had also had his welding machine destroyed, so he is as happy as I am about it. Um, so I notched up his experience that nobody lends anything anymore because all I can, I've got this little flag I can put up saying, you know, when I lent out my welding machine, that's what happened to it. That's why I don't lend anything out anymore. It's my get out of jail free card I don't lend nothing anymore because even your screwdriver it will never come back you have to go and get it I mean I was I think Philip was on about this Philip was on about an employee at his restaurant because she took his charger for his phone home to charge her phone from the restaurant didn't ask him just took it and I said oh yeah I've got it it's at my house it's like why is it at your house it's mine people do this stuff there's no, the sense of ownership isn't right. Um, it's like people say about privacy and boundaries of gardens and stuff. They sort of don't exist. Unless it's theirs. You normally find people don't like it the other way around, bizarrely. So they grasp it, but don't grasp it. You know, 
they're like, what's he, what are you annoyed about? But at the same time, you go and do it to them. They don't like it at all. So be aware. Trust is something that develops. You learn which people you can trust over time. And even then, some people do some, some things that really you think built up this trust over like years. And then you go and do something like this. Now, I'll give you another an example. Um, a guy near us has several apartments. Um, he's got more than me. And he sends a budget regularly for the maintenance and stuff. And the family did nothing. When I say nothing, I'm talking about a gate that is probably eight foot high by about... 10 foot wide fell off because it had rusted um, they hadn't even maintained it even when they could see the bottom was falling off and scraping they just push it harder <laughs> Bear in mind, the budget's been sent he sent the money for maintaining that for painting the apartments doing it but hey ho like many others it gets spent on the wrong things depending who you are I suppose um, but the maintenance wasn't done then the guy's coming home. The guy's not, not been back for three years. So suddenly there's a flurry of activity because his wife sent the money ahead because she's aware. So obviously something's gone and said, the gate's falling off, the, nobody's painted nothing, all the grills are rusting. All the, and it's like she sent a quiet budget ahead uh, to do all the maintenance that should have been done for years. Where's the lesson learned? There isn't one. Because even when they arrived, you know, there's obviously been some discussion go on during the trip because I spoke to the guy about it. And he says, oh, yeah, well, we're creating work. Look, they're painting. And it's like, okay. I mean, you know, myself, I would have just turned around and said, well, that was no more budget is being spent. That's it. Or go and speak to somebody like me that's just around the corner and say, Matt, can you manage these? They don't do it. You get your own workers in, or you can manage them. You manage the budget, you control the budget. Because the thing with me is, here's a bit of advice, you want somebody to actually manage your properties, is I photograph everything. I'll video it. I'll show you where the money's been spent, etc. We keep receipts and all that sort of stuff. Because we know what we want. Yeah, I know what I want. I audit very large contracts. I... When I look at a contract, I'm looking at why it's losing money. Because some of my worst contracts um, have been losing, even, even a small one, a £4 million contract was losing half a million pounds a year. So it's it's actually supposed to be uh, non-profit, but it's not supposed to have any debt. Because non-profit's a complete farce anyway. Non-profit basically means we siphon the cash off, um, but it doesn't actually show a profit for tax. It's very easy to be non-profit, but it makes it sound like you're a very loving company and doing it all for the benefit of man. No, corporate greed. <laughs> but the point was, it was losing half a million. So I, I went look look through and I go, okay, maintenance. How many maintenance jobs are outstanding? 6,000. So then I go, okay, well, we've got six. Why aren't they getting done? And I start filtering them down and... And nobody has even done the basics of going this address because this is for fourteen thousand houses, by the way. It's 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 uh, for housing, social housing. So nobody's even gone right. There's twenty locksmith jobs in one street. Get the locksmith to do all those this week and filter them out and dictate it to the contractor, because the contractor was disorganized. So me being me. If you're disorganized, I'll organize you. It's as simple as that. I'm not trying to lose money, but if I'm losing money and you're also losing money because you're not reaching target, so you're not reaching target, which means we fine you, which means you're losing even more money, it doesn't help anybody. So I organize them. And do you know what? Within, I think it was, within two weeks, they normally have a lot of complaints. So we normally get about 60 complaints a week. It went down to zero within two weeks. 
the job quantity that was outstanding reduced phenomenally because the first thing you get is duplicates. You get 10 jobs that are exactly the same. It's just they've never been fixed. So people call up and get another one, another one, another one. So you end up with 10 jobs that are actually just one. So you filter all that out and it's just being very methodical. And that's just generally the way I am. It's why I don't make many friends in business because I'm very, very blunt. I'm very, very honest, and that's that's what I do. Um, that's that's what in my industry I'm very blunt. But at the same time, in the facilities management industry, I think it's full of idiots now. They've got rid of too many engineers, assuming managers are more important. Where I'll go down the McDonald's route, uh, which is basically bring in the U.S version of McDonald's and they sacked hundreds of managers from the UK that were just jobs worth streamlined it instantly because they were, it was just bloated with nonsense but they, they see the problem is top level filter away the bottom level to create more jobs for their friends so anyway gone completely off tangent so trust trust is really really important and don't give it too lightly Trust is built up over time. Trust is more to do with assuming somebody stealing from you, robbing you, or lying to you. And once they can prove that they're not, you can trust them. I can't make it simpler than that. But in the Philippines, people will do so many stuff blatantly, obviously, in front of you. And then you're going, I can't believe somebody just did that. But at the same time, it goes on to everybody. It's not just you. It's not just foreigners. They do it to everybody. It's it's something you need to learn to adapt to. And like I said, if you don't trust anybody, then you've got no problems. Because at the same time, you don't have to give anything. Because they don't have a welding machine, it doesn't mean you have to lend yours. Because you've invested your time, money, and effort in buying, earning, and maintaining it doesn't mean you should give it to the guy next door just because he hasn't got one. It's not your problem. <laughs> Thanks for watching.